Robert Rossman, the staff engineer at the Martian, uh, and I've been the uh, last year in 2019, I was, I guess, a co-chair with Drew, very much in the background, and the year before I was the chair. Yep, and I'm Drew Whistle. I've been working various Python jobs for years now. Um, currently, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so in 2019, as Robert said, I was co chair with him, and I will be you know, doing the same role again in 2020. Um, I've been, this will be my fourth DjangoCon this year, so I've been an attendee, a speaker, and now an organizer. Yeah, my first DjangoCon was uh, the Philly one. Uh, I think that's 2016, might be 2015. That sounds right. Um, my first was uh, 17 in um, Spokane. Okay, so it's probably 2016. So can you guys talk about about like the name opportunity grants? I mean, versus versus just uh, uh, just like financial aid and where does it come from and all that? I'll let you take that one, Greg. Through because you know it. Sure. Uh, so you know, with the name financial aid, it conjures images of lengthy applications back from you know having to apply to college in the U.S. and things like that, and we wanted to kind of fall in with more the uh, with some of the our more progressive conferences that we like to follow. Like a, I think we got the name Opportunity Grants from JacobCon Europe um, in 2018, 2019, Sasha led the campaign to uh, <clears throat> change that name over from uh, financial grant aid to opportunity grants because it um, kind of conveys more of a it's an opportunity rather than just us just you know helping you. It's for it's about you getting the money and being able to attend the conference rather than just you know some lengthy bureaucratic mess. How much is, is is there a specific amount of money reserved for that every year, or it depends on how many how many people are asking for it? Or uh, definitely allocates a set bu percentage of the bu set budget each year. Um, it depends on the uh, how much money Defn is able to rake in from sponsorships and um, donations and things like that. I think our budget last year was around twenty thousand dollars for two thousand nineteen. Yep, and we also um, apply for grants from other organizations that we partner with um, and they you know, allocate to that budget. Yeah, both uh, the Django Software Foundation and the Python Software Foundation chipped in last year, for example. What are usually the type of person that, that applies for these grants? Or, I mean, is it different in the type of, of people that, that have been applying for these grants versus the type of, of uh, attendees that you guys would like to get? To apply for these grants? I can't really answer that question because one of the things we intentionally don't gather is demographics. Um, so uh, one of the things that we don't want people to think is uh, plays into it is that there's any kind of bias in the way that the funds get granted. It's, it should be uh, mainly uh, on the descriptive text on what they say what they're asking for uh, because as it has to uh, as it operates, as it tends to operate, uh, the um, uh, many times people just ask for they provide very little description of any, of any kind whatsoever, and we have to weigh that description against what other descriptions are of what their situation is, what their need is, uh, and uh, we don't need uh, any other bias applied to us. <laughs> Absolutely agreed. Yeah, we, um, yeah, as you said, we don't uh, collect on our graphics for that reason. We just like to people to express themselves. This is why we want to come to JengaCon. This is what I hope to learn from it. And uh, this is what makes, this is why I want to be here. You know, it's about, it's about the attendee, not so much what they check in that boxes. One of the things uh, I will uh, add uh, to that is, uh, I think it's like a, a related question sometimes people uh, thinking that if they're coming internationally um, or if they're coming from uh, some other country that that will be like a, a negative effect to, to their application it, it's uh, the uh, the uh, the the ask itself the thing that gets weighted the most more than anything else is them explaining why on earth they want to come but like you know what what is are they been using Django? Are they brand new to Django? How are they related to us? Are they not related at all to us? They just ex tell a, tell tell a story about what what their situation is, uh, because many uh, occasions there's it's mostly just just a handful of words of like I would like to come. It's my first time, and that 
we have to weigh that against someone else who's saying, uh, I can barely afford to pay rent, but I really want to come. And that person is coming, uh, you know, from a distance inside the U.S. that makes it equal cost to someone coming from somewhere in Central America, right? So. Yeah, like for flights to the West Coast of the United States, a flight from the East Coast to the U.S. is not that different from, like you said, Central America. The costs are roughly the same in that regard. So, yeah, it's – and also the thing that tends to um, – or that was really kind of plus in their applications they mentioned being involved in local communities. Like if they are active in their the local Python group, the Django group, or they – you know, they want to take that knowledge they learn and share the that they have locally, that helps a lot too. Help spread the word about JangoCon and what we do, who we are, and uh, the knowledge that they gain. Hopefully, so that's that's uh, that's actually a, a really good point of view uh, because I I wanted uh, I wanted to see if there was like maybe one or two questions that you guys think that any attendee like if if anybody answer yes to to one or two questions then then they will say something like okay I I, I should apply for a for a, a an opportunity grant, right? Like, how, how do I know as an attendee that that I should apply for one, right? Uh, for me, I would say if you think you need help going, say you're not sure if your company will pay for you to go, if you're, say, you can get, you can get funding from outside, like from your job, if things like that, take that, of course. But if you need help for whatever reason, go ahead and apply. The worst thing that happens is we, is we can't find room for you in the budget. <laughs> So and and what about the the uh, the application itself? Like, what are you guys? I mean, uh, feel free to talk as much in depth about this as, as you like, or, or if you just wanna brush the surface, that's okay. Uh, but like, what are the different things that you take into consideration? Like, because I I mean I I guess that it's very difficult to weigh like one application versus another because there is no. It's not comparing apples versus apples, right? It's just like widely different contexts. Yeah, very much so. Um, for me, uh, the like, like I like to see that they they've shown some effort in terms of looking up what the cost will be. You know, do just like doing some cursory Google flight searches or whatever travel agent you like to use. So you have a rough idea of how much the flights will cost, rather than just saying I want two thousand dollars, saying. It'll cost, flights will be about this much, hotels will be about this much, and then and so forth for whatever uh, cost they may have. That that way they can, that they show, they, they've made an effort to show that they want to come and they show, they're not just blindly asking for money. I would say that's probably uh, a good way of like bringing it. Another way I would add in is that um, no promises going forward on methods used, but in the past, uh, if you only need a hundred, uh, hundred bucks, <laughs> right? If That's what's just funny. Ask, but go ahead. But yes. Yeah. It's if if you have, if you have a small if you have a very small ask, right? If you can, uh, the smaller asks do tend to get a slightly better weight because we can fit more of them in, and our goal is to make as many people attend as possible. So uh, once we have but I think it might be appropriate to talk to this. We go through a blind review round where we just rate the uh, the merit of each ask. And we have several people who uh, rate the, the ask itself. And then presently, we just take highest score first and just begin allocating until we run out of budget. And then we start to have to make hard choices of like, this person's asking for $3,000. That is more than 10% of the budget. But there are three people below this person and we can get all those people in if you just deallocate this other person we have this that's where the, the hard part hits uh and so we have to make choices about what we want to do and sometimes we begin um playing with other things like uh what well, i think it was two years ago two years ago where we introduced some caps for the first time hmm. in certain categories and we had carried those caps forward to 2019 as well. Yeah, and those caps were a way for us to try to make the uh, to give out to people the same amount for a similar thing. That is to say, if you have a room that you're attending 
you know, that you're going to stay in, and you, you're asking for the uh, hotel room payment that we cap it at the same amount. We're not giving four hundred dollars to one person for their hotel stay and a hundred dollars to another just because of what they asked. Um, so giving a, a more consistent cap. Uh, same thing with flights. We put caps on those things as well so that we could uh, limit those things down. Um, one of the things that we have found over time, and to sound like I'm going to go back and like uh, renege on something I just said, which is, you know, see if you can fit more people in with less thing, uh, with less money. The, we find ourselves sometimes in the problem that if we give away very small opportunity grants, a hundred bucks, fifty bucks, seventy-five bucks, that people won't actually come because uh, it is uh, even though we. Uh, sometimes give them exactly what they asked for. Sometimes people, the, the most, uh, I would say, offending category is the people who just want a free ticket. They're like, I right, don't worry, I'll come down there and I'll stay with some friends and I just want a ticket. And they're, you know, from the area. And then because they don't view the ticket as value for some reason or another, uh, even though it does overall decrease the budget we allocate, it's money that we have reserved in the budget that we have to pay ourselves back and forth one way or another for paying for someone's ticket. Um, uh, though that's like, I seem to remember at least in 2018 as a, so many unclaimed tickets. That was a large quantity of dollars related to that. And I don't know if that's true, same thing last year. We did not have as many last year. I think we, we also did not did not have as many ticket only grants as the 2018, I believe. But it was there was a small amount. I think like three or four maybe single tickets that were left unclaimed. Okay. Something so pretty small number. Yeah, I think it was a dozen or so the previous year. So, um, but yeah, so uh, we have to oh, knowing uh, also the human nature of making small grants is something else that also plays into this of. If we give a too small of a grant that we may actually will have a lot of people who uh, claim it, say, yes, I will take that money, take that money. They'll, when we give them the grant, they'll claim the grant and then just no show Yeah. Um, at the conference. And we are left with a bank of funds um, that we could have actually had you know, given someone else who wanted to come. Usually when there is unclaimed tickets, those come from, uh, from grants? Uh, these, well, some people can re request money just to him. Um, request, you can request money and you can request tickets. So you could request, you know, I just need tickets. I can get my own way there, or I live locally and I just want tickets. Or you can request just money. For example, my they're saying I'm I'm speaking, but I need some extra money to help cover travel costs. Or I can or I can pay part of my way, but I can't pay all my way. I just need some extra money. Or we actually had one person last year who um, just wanted some extra money to help cover the cost of transporting her service animal over because, but uh, for the extra accessibility, which is great. Uh, unfortunately, circumstances woke out, worked out that she couldn't make it, and so we ended up not giving her, so we ended up uh, not giving her money this year. But that she was very communicative, communicative with us through the entire process, and it was great to work with. But you know, there are all sorts of unusual and unexpected circumstances that may come up. So these are the different um, the, like categories that you were talking about that, that, that you have. And these categories, is it something like when you submit a grant, do you have to choose which category are you submitting the grant for? Or is this categorization something that you guys do whenever you're going through all the, the, the requests? In 2000, or here, go ahead, Robert, sorry. I mean, uh from i think it goes back to 2017 um as far as i remember there's a, a two-step question of uh do you need only a ticket and if you ask answer yes to that then we don't ask you any more questions if you say no to that then we ask you how much money do you need and then we request a breakdown of it for us to be able to um, answer uh, uh answer some questions about it um if you don't break down, we will tend to be um, less able to understand what the request is for, actually, and it makes it a little more difficult to judge. So, giving that breakdown is important. Um, so, those are the way that uh, we basically categorize it for us: is we ask the people to self-categorize with uh, two, three steps, I guess you would say. 
uh, do you need just a ticket? Or you don't need just a ticket? How much money do you need? And then break it down those ways. Yeah, and one thing we'll um, try to do this year as well, too, and hopefully uh, make things a little bit clearer, is there was some confusion last year about uh, just using the word ticket, whether we're talking about a conference ticket or a plane ticket. And so we're going to be, that you should clarify the wording a little bit to clarify that those are applicable. Talking about the, the application that somebody's going to fill out, um, I, I mean, with this information, it's probably also a good idea for, uh, as Robert was saying, like for, for everybody who's who's filling out the the, the, uh, the application to uh, detail exactly what is it that, well, that's, that's one thing that is not 100% clear to me, like, should they detail exactly what is it that they need the grant for, or should they detail exactly what is it that they're going to, uh, like, spend some money uh, throughout the entire trip, regardless if it's for, for the, I mean, from the grant or not, and then at the end of it say, this is why I need like, uh, I don't know, $500, which is going to be about 10% of my, of my actual expenses. So. I think, um, the way we have the form set out is that it's pretty much, okay, it is, it is like, give us a total amount and then please try to break it down for flights versus hotel versus transportation, other transportation. Etc. So yeah, so kind of give us a big number and then break it up into pieces as you can best tell. So say your ask is seven hundred bucks. So say that's four hundred for flights and two hundred and say two hundred to cover half of your hotel and another hundred to cover cab fares to and from the airport type of thing. Yeah, the exact wording question I pulled up. So this is twenty nineteen's exact wording. May change to 2020. How do you plan to spend the opportunity grant? Please give an estimated cost breakdown. So it's moderately implemented. That, that is the uh, that is the only question by which you can determine all those things. And, and by the way, one of the things that I should, should also add here to everything else is that is one question. Our entire form, including the checking the box that you understand you have to submit, submit submit receipts to us in order for us to follow IRS guidelines since we're in the U.S. and we have to keep them happy. Um, everything, including that, and your name and your email address is 10 fields. Okay. So I, I think we're going to add one more field to it this year, just uh, asking what airport you're going to be coming from to make, a, to make it easier to, to identify the uh, travel costs. Yeah. So one of the main things, again, to like reemphasize, re we don't ask lots of information unnecessarily because in the past some forms are longer and we're trying to be very much not bureaucratic, not detailed uh, on uh, on every little thing, weigh the cost of adding every single thing because the cost of someone going, opening up a form and seeing all these fields and then be like, and I'm going to have to go to another page. They might just bounce. Uh, we'd rather people, uh, uh, you know, submit the form to us uh, rather than us get all of our uh, little fancy questions answered. <laughs> well, now it's still, I mean, that, I think that's a good idea, but also uh, you guys are, are kind of like uh, uh, leaving things open so whoever is writing these grants they can add anything else right because there's that question about okay tell us exactly what are you going to spend this money uh, on but also they could add like uh, the uh, uh, maybe ex an explanation on their on their context right like why is their specific case uh, unique and stuff like that yeah, we have a separate question about to tell us a little, about your, a little bit about yourself and why you'd like to come to JacobCon for that exact, exact sort of thing. Yeah, that's the, that's the point to cover that. And one of the reasons why we don't give nice, fine, great, great balance of, you know, hotel and travel and other fields is because in the case of service animal, we would never think to put that field. Yeah. Uh, I am, it's just something that had not come up before. As a as an ask for someone to have, and rather than us being, uh, shall I say, um, uh, un unfriendly with our limiting of our choices down, and preemptively, and also moderately prompting with people to tell them to go ahead and supply us with things that they maybe are fine with, you know, like they're like, oh, we are, you know, a person doesn't have the need anything to travel, but you know, 
they, they all take Ubers. Ubers. They all just <laughs> <laughs> supply a field, uh, supply them a field that they'll go ahead and bring to put more information in. We get a nice open ended ask allows for us to do the judgment on the back end themselves. So I think uh, there's one more question about about the actual filling out the, the grants uh, itself. Is there like, well, I mean, we, we went through the different questions that or like the main ones, the, the main questions that the, the, uh, the form has and, and like how people should or more or less fill out the uh, the breakdown of what is it that they're going to spend it on and, and a little bit about why they're going to come you know, to DjangoCon or they want to. Um, so what about your personal takes on what's the most important info piece of information on those grants or, or like, uh, I mean, this can probably come from whenever you see uh, some of these forms come through and you read them and you go like, well, we can't even take this one into consideration because it's missing this or that, or like, well, like what's, what's the best way to fill out these, these uh, requests. For me personally, the thing I like to pay attention to more than anything else is that you tell me about yourself and what you can and uh, who you are, why you, why you like to go to Jacob Con. If you can't, you know, tell us you know, why this is not just some other tech conference to go to, why, why Django Con specifically, that is a big eliminator in my mind that says, hey, I, I just want to go to a tech conference. It's a very different, a very different ask than I want to come to Django Con. Yeah, I wouldn't agree with what Drew said. Um, that's the most important thing um, because that's the, the main thing that we judge the entire um, application by. If you ask for you know, a relatively modest sum but don't ask that thing, You'll, you'll roundly you'll be related of, uh, you'll be very lowly rated as a, an application just if you almost not even answer it just see you know, like, you have no means by which to judge against other people who bother to fill it out well that's good uh, and, and also I think uh, this kind of answers another question because I've seen on Twitter there's a lot of people that they are hesitant on, on on applying for these type of grants i mean be it DjangoCon or maybe other conferences too because they go like i don't know uh it's not like uh i'm in bankruptcy on or, or anything like that should i actually apply for this but i mean this is this, this should should always be open to anyone right even if they're somebody that, that that's gonna talk on the conference and they've already gotten a free ticket quote unquote because they're talking on the conference. I mean, it's still okay for them to submit one of these grants, right? Yep, I mean, I think the only, since we do one point in time, you know, uh, we do show the name of the person with, with the grant so we can have judgment, just so in case Bill Gates applies, we can tell him no. <laughs> <laughs> but that's mostly joking, but if someone's name happens to name collide with Bill Gates, <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, and your point about speakers is a good one too because I mean, yeah, last year was the first year we were able to offer speaker travel reimbursement separate from the actual opportunity grant process. But even then, we still had a few. I want to say about four people, give or take, that actually received additional opportunity grant money on top of the speaker travel reimbursements. That uh, so yeah, if you're speaking, go ahead and apply by all means. And if you're, um, you know. If you're or even a couple of organizers got a little bit of aid last year as well. Yeah, that, that's true. And uh, I think uh, so. I don't know if this information has been shared before, but I wouldn't hold back up again just to give the idea of what what the ask size is that people tend to ask for. Uh, uh, we had, I believe, um, the most that someone asked for last year, dollar wise was six thousand dollars wow. yeah that was a fun one <laughs> yeah the least that someone asked for was a hundred dollars uh, but most people uh, on average of our set of uh 80 a count of 80 uh three i should say um uh, we had uh with that six thousand number dragging everything up it's uh 1493 hmm. So, 
I'm not sure I can go look up the uh, the mode and other things like that too. But that's that gives you an idea of where people sit in their ass. Yeah, that's. A, I think that that gave us a pretty good overview of uh, the amounts, which is also very interesting. So, uh, so okay, let's let's see. Like we've gone through more or less like how you guys start uh, categorizing these these different uh, applications, and then and then well, I mean, there's there's still a lot of things to take into consideration, but it's a, a good thing that that we we've, we've been able to talk about exactly or like the the most important parts of the application for you, um, and and then like. What are the different things that people should, or how should they fill out the entire application? So, what about how exactly does it work? Like once, okay, I've submitted my my application, my grant application. I got it. I got an email back saying like, "Cool, you're gonna get this money." Um, now, how how am I gonna get that money? And 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 there's there's a, an interesting thing that Robert just mentioned a little bit right now. Which is about the whole IRS uh, topic of it, right? So there's, I mean, if there's any international people, usually we don't know a lot about IRS or what that is, right? So and and, and you guys have to take that in, that into consideration. Right, right. Um, yeah. Uh, so the re the reimbursement process is we try to make it as straightforward as possible. Um, you just uh, scan or take a picture of your receipts and email them to um, Defna. The address I believe is hello at defna.org. Defna being the Django Events Foundation North America. They're the body that runs uh, Django, uh, runs DjangoCon, and um, they handle all the actual reimbursement process. And they'll ask, come back and ask you if you have questions about your receipts and things like that. They'll validate it against a spreadsheet that has all the maxims that were allotted to the individuals and all that. And then once they, uh, then they'll well, reimburse you. Most people, if you can, they'll reimburse via PayPal. But if you're, if you're international and PayPal doesn't work there, they'll use uh, I guess TransferWise as a service to transfer the money over that way. And then as far as the IRS reporting goes, I believe they said that definitely submits that uh, information to the IRS as well. Yeah. And I want to say that we, Correct me on this too if I misremember it, but um, we have as a primary process actually that they can do it in person at the, at the conference. We tried not to make the in person thing as much of an option last year as we did previous years, just because Craig Bruce, the deaf treasurer, was not able to be there in person. Gotcha. And so we didn't have, so we didn't want to try to burden the other deaf people there with the extra work that they're doing on top of everything else. Okay, so let's see if I got this uh, right. So then I submit my my grant and then I uh, I don't know let's say five hundred bucks right, uh, and then it's like maybe two hundred and fifty for a for a flight and then another two hundred and fifty for the hotel and maybe some meals. Uh, so then I get a yes from uh, from from the the conference organizers you guys, and and then from then on my. What I have to do is is basically just to to keep the receipts, and then after everything is done, I will send that to you. I mean, even even if if maybe I spent instead of uh instead of five hundred, I spend like six hundred. Uh, you guys are going to reimburse the five hundred bucks, and then I will just end up spending one hundred. Exactly right. Yes. Yeah, and um. If you know things, and you know, so if say you're say you budgeted two fifty for hotel and two fifty for flight, and you came out to be you spent three hundred on flight and two hundred on hotel, that's fine as long as your total asks you know your total asks still capture that five hundred bucks that you were actually awarded for, even if the you know, if the actual breakdown doesn't match what you would ask for in your grants, it's, the total amount is what matters there as far as reimbursement goes. Yeah, and and I will add, even though we just said that we really want people to apply and uh, all that stuff, that if they get into a situation where um, they, for some reason, can't attend, uh, we can know, the sooner that we can know, the sooner we can go off and give someone else that uh, branch. We can roll down the list and give someone else an opportunity. Yeah, I can actually use myself as an example there. For the 2018 uh, conference, I was I was in the middle of changing jobs when I submitted my um, talk and my uh, opportunity grant because I wasn't sure whether my new company would pay for my way or not. And then I found out that oh yes, I've been got accepted. So I asked work, hey, can you guys remember, uh, take care of my travel? 
and uh, they didn't get back to me in time before the, the, uh, my grant was actually awarded. But uh, as soon as I found out, I emailed Robert and said, hey, my company's paying my travel. Can I decline my award? And then Robert quickly uh, went around and found someone else who was to uh, donate, distribute my money to. Every year, do you guys always spend like all the, the, the money allocated for the grants? Oh, we try to. <laughs> yeah, we, we budget spending all of it, but we always end up coming just a little bit short and then that money gets rolled over into next year's budget. Okay, okay. So, and what about if, for instance, uh, maybe I submitted a grant, uh, I, it wasn't accepted, but then at the end of it, uh, maybe there there were uh, a few people, maybe one or two people that they they declined the grant because, as, as you were saying, Drew, right, like maybe they were, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the company was paying for their travel or whatever. Uh, is there, do you guys do something like, okay, we have two or three people that they declined the, the grant, is is there, there there's like open spaces here i mean do, do you do you go back to the people that were accepted were just pending or to do you go back to everyone who submitted it? uh the way that has been done recently is that's that score that i mentioned going down the list and we just roll down the next set of names uh it makes it so that it makes it so that we don't have to do additional rounds of judging right uh, uh we uh, we all together review the set all at once and it keeps it fair for everyone that uh, we don't like relook at you know some applications separately that popped into our minds yeah and we don't have a at this point a, a sort of a standby list that we could give last minute awards to like for example with the service animal example i used from last year she didn't find out she couldn't make it until like two weeks before the conference and so we weren't able to um redistribute that grant in time so that'll be rolling over into this year's budget yeah, because if we were to spend the time to uh, to uh, try to grant money to each person in that last two weeks, like, and do you all want it? <laughs> and uh, everyone, I'm sure, scrambles because we don't know if people are attending or not. If they submit this grant, the assumption is that without it, that their attendance would either be jeopardized or uh, plainly not possible. Yeah, and especially for overseas visitors, you may have to get a visa, which is a month long, month long process. The receipts that, that people have to submit, is there anything off limits, or is like anything that you get a receipt for is okay? I would say anything that you got a receipt for that was in the realm of what you asked for. <laughs> and yeah, we're not going to. Yeah, we're not going to reimburse you for going to San Diego Zoo, for example. So, so yeah, moving into into like international recipients uh, of grants, how is is there like what are the main issues that you guys ha have seen, uh, or or what are like maybe a few things that you would like to say to to any anybody who's international and, and wants to apply for a grant? I'm preemptively sorry for all the travel grants. <laughs> <laughs> yes, same here. Yeah, last year, for example, we had one person who um, couldn't, who was not able to make the conference because the USA Department literally gave him his visa for the wrong dates, and so his visa would expire mid-conference. And so he really could, so for, so for him to attend would actually be, you know, staying here uh, illegally, so to speak. And so he would, yeah, so that would kind of kill his ability to make it there, and we felt terrible about that. We still, we, re we went ahead and proactively reimbursed his uh, visa application fees, and uh, told him to go ahead and apply this year as well. And um, actually, some other friends in the Jenga community are offering to help out with that as well, which is quite nice for him, for his case particularly. But uh, in general, yeah, the the earlier you can get started on the visa process, the better off you'll be. And um, if you uh, happen to run into troubles, you know, we have a visa uh, process, the your visa help, the visa letter that you can get from us. Um, I forget the email, I think it's like visa at jengacon.us, but don't quote me on that. That you can actually just email and ask, hey, can, can you help me with the visa process? And they have... They at least know who to who to direct you to the State Department towards getting your visa applied, get the, uh, getting it applied for, and uh, with any luck approved. What are the main the main requests that you that you guys have seen there? I mean, because I would suspect that maybe it's gonna be it's gonna be mainly about uh, about flights because flying into the the U.S. it's a little bit more expensive whenever you come from like another country because if you fly. I don't know, let's say, uh, what, like, maybe 
uh, Texas to to San Diego, it's like a 200 bar flight, I think. It's not so expensive. But if you fly like probably South America, San Diego, I think it's probably gonna be like, I don't know, 800 bucks, something like that. Yeah, absolutely. We and that's part of the reasons why that's why we factor in the cost of you know we're basically you have an idea based on where you're coming from. So we have a rough idea that oh hey, if you're flying from out of country, it's going to be more expensive or by by and large than if you're flying domestically. I say by and large because I where I live in in uh, Huntsville, Alabama, actually has like you know one of the most expensive flights in the country. I think mine last year was about was over five hundred bucks to fly from to San Diego from Alabama. It was ridiculous. Yeah, but um, so yeah, it's. We, uh, yeah, we, and so what we'll do is we, we'll also check, check and get a rough idea. So, okay, these are how much the flights are from this country to get here. So we have a, you know, at least make sure that the ask is in a reasonable route. I mean, differences happen, you know, in, uh, as always, airline flights, airline, air, sorry, flight, flight prices constantly, continuously change. And so what may have been accurate at the time you applied, maybe 200 bucks plus or minus a direction by the time we're actually reviewing the grants. So, so we, we all take that into account as well. And there's more and more things that, that, that we can see that you guys have to take into consideration like there is a bunch of research around each and every one of the of the applications that you guys get so when i mean it's it's probably better for everyone to just submit their application as soon as possible right but um when when does it does this start or when is it too early to do it or too late to do it well, I can tell you it's too early right now because we haven't actually finished the form for this year yet. But um, the form will go live about the same time we call the proposal goes live, which if last year's time period is an indication, will be around the March or April time frame. And then it closes, and I believe late, that believe the uh, call for proposals closes. And it closed last year, I would say in late May or maybe early June. It'll be about that same time frame this year. Uh, the exact time we haven't even set, uh, finalized any of those dates yet, so those are all ballpark numbers. Uh, I don't know if, if there's anything that we missed that you guys would like to talk about, maybe, uh, or just like mention something else. I guess the last thing I'd like to say is that if you have any doubts whatsoever about whether you should apply, go ahead and apply. I mean, please, we like we welcome the applications and encourage you to apply. And if you have questions, you can always email, email us at um, grants at jingocom.us and we can respond to questions you might have. Well, I don't have anything to say now because you said all the things I was going to say. Um, I, I, how, would I, how would I say I look forward to having um, you apply if you're watching this? <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Uh, well, you know what? Uh, I, I have an, an idea also. Uh, what about future work? Do you guys uh, have any or or have uh, like any to do list for these next few years or th things that you would like to to improve or maybe change or just try something new? Yeah, is there anything like that? I personally would like to see more companies contribute to the opportunity grants fund so we can award some more people. Yeah, you know, the more play, you know, if say if companies want to, I think. Last, not last year, but 2018, I think one company, I forget who it was, actually specifically contributed part of their, self, their sponsorship money to the Opportunity Grants Fund, and that helped to award the grants to more people that way. I'd like to see more companies do that. Uh, mine is slightly different. Um, one of the things that, in theory, a good number of people who are coming to DangoCon are good at is they're good developers, programmers, software engineers. Um, but... Uh, the main tool by which we use the opportunity grants, we, we have this tool that we send it through called Grog. And the tool was made by Andrew Godwin. And Andrew already has enough things on his plate uh, aside. To, uh, but the, the tool is uh, very old at this point and uh, would need some TLC. In fact, it needs some of the... Uh, I think it needs to be brought up so that it's in a long-term support version that, we, that Django actually supports. So if anyone goes out and searches up ROG and wants to make some pull requests against that on GitHub, it's G-R-O-R-G, and to make some improvements, I'm sure Andrew will appreciate it since he's trying to redo the async stuff. Well, uh, redo the sync stuff and Django to async stuff, and it's already got channels and migrations and enough. <laughs> <laughs>